Hey folks, how are we doing today? Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Alex Foreman, and this is the Fly Fishing Bushwhacker YouTube channel. Didn't even actually seem scripted. So, what are we doing here today? Well, I'm very excited to start showing and sharing some of the skills um, and some of what goes into tying Atlantic salmon flies that's been shown to me. Uh, it's kind of the purpose of the YouTube channel. It's all about you folks, you, the viewers, the subscribers, the likers, the 70% that don't actually subscribe. <laughs> but the content is meant for you. I would like everybody that watches my episodes, clips, so on and so forth, to be able to take something from it. Um, I have grown some confidence in tying Atlantic salmon flies. My flies are just as good as the last tree that they've hooked. Uh, they stay together really well. I try to simplify the process and I've sort of figured out my materials. Um, so what I'm going to do here today is tie an Atlantic salmon fly, like I said, the bare hair green butt. Uh, I'm going to show you the materials and how to tie that kind of step by step. So anyways, let's get into it. I'm going to show you the materials first. Today we'll be using a must add salmon heavy single, 2XH by 3XL. Size six, it's a great hook. They're strong and budget friendly. Our main thread for tying the bulk of the fly will be done in uni threads, eight aught white. This thread is relatively strong, comes pretty waxed, and it is nice to tie a nice white body for more vibrant colors, such as the chartreuse neon flaws that will be used for the butt. Starting off with the tag, we will be using uni French small silver oval tinsel. For the butt, we will be using Unifloss Neon Chartreuse. As we get into building the body, we will be using Uni Stretch Black. For the ribbing of the fly, again, we will be using Uni French Oval Small Silver Tinsel. To finish the fly off, we will be using Uni Thread dot Black, giving the head a nice black finish. For our wing section, we will be using some local Black Bear Bear Hair. Black Bear Bear Hair. I purchased this for $3 at the Trope Brook Fly Shop on the Northwest River. Thank you, Sid. This stuff is some of the nicest quality bear hair that I've had the pleasure of using. And this is approximately one Ziploc bag. For the throat, we'll be keeping it simple by just using some premium black hen saddle feathers. We'll start off with getting our hook in the vise. I like to give it a good little bling to make sure that it's secure and not going to move along the vise. We're going to start off by tying in right where the eye of the hook has been bent over, right here. Our main flying thread will be Uni A dot. I like to start my flies off with a nice smooth pass, touching ends from where I've started through to the back of the hook shank where I'll start to tie in the tag. Gets a little trickier. as you come in towards that hook point. Try your best to keep your thread ends touching like so. We're gonna clip that off now.
Starting off with our tag. I'll generally do about four wraps for the tag. Tuck that thread under, nice and tight as possible. I usually do about two wraps under and then I begin to bring this tinsel straight, trying to make a nice smooth touching ends again. I'm gonna extend a bit past the hook point here and then snip off this tinsel. From here, I'm gonna move on to the Unifloss chartreuse. I'm gonna go ahead and get this in and then position it accordingly. A smooth little trick that I've picked up from watching a lot of other tires is to allow the tension from your bobbin to secure your floss in place while getting things set up. You'll notice that I'm using a little bit of tag here on that floss. This would be used in the end to wrap the tag over the rest I do find that the uni floss can be a little bit more fragile compared to other things like uni yarn, but it does give a nice clean looking fly and I've tied bringing it back over. I do find to make it a lot more secure. So I do tend to do about three wraps coming forward. I'll stop my first wrap and throughout this process, I'll pull on that little bit of tail end and I'm going to make one, two, three, four, five. I think we're, yeah, we're going to want to do six. Six very tight wraps. And now we're going to do another six wraps forward. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So again, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this right now. I'm gonna grab my thread and pull that in. And what I really like to do here is put a fair amount of tension on my thread and really kind of build that up and tuck it in. I'm gonna leave this alone for now, and we're gonna come back to it in a minute here. I'm gonna do some 45, kind of looser, spaced out wraps here, keeping this on the bottom, just until I get to that little part there where I started to clip that off. A couple wraps to secure it in. Now I'm gonna go add some more tinsel and we're gonna tie that back towards the butt and this is gonna set up to be the ribbing through the fly. Again, a really nice trick is to just bring that through. I like to pull down a nice 45 and then go here. So for this time, I wanna consistently keep building a nice smooth body. We're gonna do touching wraps end to end as best we can, because I don't have the light where it should be. Back to that tag. So again, I kind of find a little way to tuck in there and I just bring it to the 
sigh a little bit. Awesome, that's looking good. Clip that off before we forget. Get my fat fingers out of the way. Perfect. Now we're gonna bring that remaining tag that we left on over. Put one wrap in and then really try to get some tension on it if you can. Oh no, we snapped. Okay, well, not planned, but it happens, folks. I'll show you how to come back from that. I will, as the YouTube filmer world in Atlantic Canada would say, I'll Chris Wessel this for you folks. Oh, give me a second here. We're not gonna edit and start over because, uh, well, that's not how every fly is. Mistakes happen every once in a while. And my hands seem to be a little bit shaky here as I'm tying this video for whatever reason. Okay. So I want to come back from this because one of the things that I enjoy about this process to how I tie my wet flies is I can keep a very smooth and neat, clean looking body. And uh, well, breaking thread like this is an awesome way to uh, mess that up. So I'll leave that alone for a second and I'm only using dot thread and uh, we will be building this body back up again. So I'm gonna start right over again here and I'm gonna come right back. Touching ends. I know I could have started back here, but it just, uh, sometimes I hate how it'll build up in one spot and it's just, I find it's a little easier to grab everything where it broke and just come right back in and, and tie back over it. See, there's that, the end that broke. So we'll, Snip that off, and here's my other end. And if you'll notice, I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but I'm kind of tucking things in there, so it's working out well for me. Let's try this again. So with one hand, I pull that tag end over, and I'll put one wrap in to get it in there, and then really want to make sure that's tight. Perfect. Good. Key uh, to this again is just taking your time, that folks. I'm gonna tie forward, um, back up here, touching ends as best as I can. Keeping this floss with me on top this time. Just gonna build up the body a little bit. I'm not doing a very good job of touching ends. Okay, just do your best job. I'm gonna have to just readjust that floss because sometimes it likes to get sidetracked on you. And we'll snip that off and do a couple wraps and make a little bit of a flat zone here. Okay, so. Whip finish tool, one, two, oops, two, three. Don't need to get too detailed. That's gonna be covered and buried. Now we're gonna come in and build our body with the uni stretch black. back and I'm going to snip this off nice and tight and um, some folks I know like to uh, lay this stuff out so it sits a little flatter I uh, honestly tie it a little tighter and, and just kind of pulls all in there and it gets this kind of nice tight looking body and I find after a little bit it sort of flattens it on its own so I just keep with the flow and um, keep everything as, as tight as I can. It's something that I've kind of picked up on from tying bugs is, is keeping things very tight. Um, it just builds up a nice fly. 
makes things look clean, and I find that uh, a tighter fly is generally a tougher fly. So we're going to come back in with our A dot here and cover up what we just tied it off there. And now you can almost see the body and where the head is going to finish off here. So coming back to our tinsel, we're going to do one, two, the third wrap is kind of your lining to the middle of your body, three, four, space things off there, five, ah, it's not, I mean, 100% perfect folks, but you know what, good enough, one, two, and three. Okay, build up a little bit of a flat spot here and secure this in and we're gonna whip off here and switch thread color. And just before we do that, we are just gonna put a little dab of glue on here. I'm running rather low on head cement glue here. Got an order coming in. I don't know why I'm using my scissors for that. Don't do that at home, folks. Okay, so now that that's dried, let's come back in. We've switched over to some Uni ADOT Black. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab a random feather here. Maybe two, whatever. And get a couple nice thick. So with the throat here, I'm not generally gonna come past um, where the body meets the butt there. I know some people do theirs a little different, but for today's video, we're just gonna do this one like so. And uh, it's taking a little long for me, so I'm gonna pull a bit out of that. Another wraps in there and there. I'm happy with it. Snip that right off. Nothing uh, not too bad at all. I can work with that. Okay. Let's come back over here and um, I'm just gonna grab a a little bit of the special sauce. Two strands of micro mirage flashaboo. And we'll snip that off just past the tick. All right, so now last into the last ingredient here. We're gonna grab some bear hair. And um, with my bear hair, I actually do just uh, Give it a quick stack. Keep things nice 
nice and even. important to pull out these stragglers because they are going to cause nothing but trouble. Now that's a pretty healthy clump of bear hair. Um, might be a little too healthy. We're going to take a little bit out of that. Alright, so, straggler still. I think we're just gonna give that another quick little stab, snap, stack, because uh, I pulled a little bit out there. A little extra. So I always just try to line these up first. It's important on an Atlantic salmon fly, you're not tying something with a huge tail on it. I wanna make sure that we get the right portionings here. So I just kind of take a minute to have a look. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Okay, so. I'm gonna try to do this so that we don't end up with a massive head. But, uh, well, you do the best you can. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. We're going to end up with an atrociously huge head on this. I have a feeling it's all right. So what I'll do here just after I've snipped that is I'm just going to go put a couple dabs of glue in here. Just because I find that bare hair can sometimes slip. So. Like I said, your fly can only sometimes be as good as the last tree that it hooked. Well, the, uh. Eye of that fly will be a big a point of impact if you're hooking trees and branches. All right, so now we're gonna go and kind of clean this up a little bit. Oh, that is an ugly looking head. I am sorry, folks, but. Well, it's not too, too bad. but a little bigger than I would like it to be, for sure. Bring it to here with some more glue. A little bit of a pull test on that. And there you have it, folks. 
The bare hair green butt tied on a number six mustache hood with a fairly massive head. I really hope you folks enjoyed this video. This is my first fly tying tutorial video. Please feel free to leave a comment in the link below. More content to come. Thanks very much again for watching, folks.